Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. So today we'll be focused largely on COVID in light of our recent activity. The COVID subvariant BA5 is rapidly spreading across the country. I doubt this is a surprise to most of you who have likely experienced an infection in yourselves or in family members over the last few weeks. First identified in South Africa in January, this variant is now the predominant strain driving an uptick in cases in many European countries, as well as in China, Australia, and the US. The latest estimates indicate that BA5 is now responsible for about 65% of all of COVID cases in this country. And in fact, this is the predominant strain identified in Duke Health where 60% of the cases are now BA5. Although related to the previously circulating Omicron strain, this variant and the related BA4 carry additional mutations. The main consequence of these mutations appears to be that the virus is less susceptible to pre-existing immunity from immunization and or prior infections, even with the original Omicron strain, meaning you can get reinfected. In a study published in Nature this month by a team of investigators at Columbia, BA4 and 5 are found to be substantially more resistant to neutralization antibodies induced by prior vaccination with or without prior Omicron infection compared to our former variants. The viral strain mutation still allowed the virus to bind to and enter cells efficiently. So the combination of this biology, as well as waxing immunity from the time since we were vaccinated originally or boosted, the relaxation of prior mitigation, stra mitigation strategies and large social events are driving the current surge. The impact of this surge has varied in different parts of the world, depending on the overall demographics and immunity of each country. The good news is that there is much le less associated severe disease, i.e. ICU admissions, and mortality compared to earlier variants, and the latter complications remain disproportionately in unvaccinated individuals. That is because there are other part aspects to an immune response, including T cell responses, that may not protect against mucosal infection, but do protect against more serious disease. However, like with the earlier Omicron surge, certain population of immunocompromised and or elderly may be at increased risk for significant disease, perhaps because they don't have robust T cell responses and do warrant further precautions as well as therapeutic intervention, which are now available. Using the CDC classification, there are now high transmission counties throughout the US and in North Carolina, 18 counties are considered high risk, including Durham, Orange and Person counties. These levels are determined by looking at hospital bed utilization, admissions and new COVID cases. Unfortunately, this is having a significant impact on Duke Health work workforce. Last week, there were about 283 reported positive cases among employees in the health system and 48 reported positive cases among university faculty and staff. Fortunately, the vast majority of infected individuals have relatively mild disease with either flu-like symptoms or upper respiratory symptoms, but they do need to follow isolation guidelines to protect those at risk, particularly the patients we care for in the health system. So what to do now? If you've not been fully vaccinated, including receiving any booster you're eligible for, now would be the time to do that. As a reminder, boosters are approved for all five years and older, five months after their vaccination series, and a second booster recommended for those 50 and older, four months after the first booster. And of course, now children from six months to five years are eligible for vaccination. Second, if you have symptoms consistent with COVID and have tested positive, either by a home antigen test or PCR, it's important to follow the CDC guidelines for five days of isolation. And if you're fever free, you can come out of isolation, but remain using your mask for five more days. Recent studies looking at culturable virus shedding over time has demonstrated that the average time to culture conversion is six days with a similar average time for antigen conversion. And that is some of the data supporting the guidelines. And if you're using home antigen tests, remember the sensitivity is only around 65%. So you should retest at 24 to 48 hours if you have symptoms and or receive a PCR test, which is considered the gold standard. And lastly, consult your physician or pharmacist regarding COVID antivirals, which are now available. 
Paxlovid for those 12 years and older is approved, particularly important for those at higher risk for significant complications. And make personal decisions about participating in events, particularly events indoors with crowding, based on the risk to you or those close to you. I am generally masking in indoor crowds and eating outdoors currently. With August just around the corner, Duke last week announced COVID protocols for the fall semester, realizing that they could change depending on the data. For now at Duke, vaccination requirements include students to complete a WHO approved COVID vaccine series prior to participation in on-campus activities with the recommendation that students receive a booster dose per CDC guidelines. Remember our medical and health science students are required to receive the booster dose when eligible per CDC as well. All new Duke employees are required to have the WHO approved COVID vaccination and booster shot, except with Duke approved medical or religious exemptions. Regarding masking, Duke University's approach to masking in classrooms will be tied to the CDC community level categories. Right now, masking will continue to be required in the classroom and even when the community risk has been reduced to medium or low for two consecutive weeks, masking will no longer be required. Masking will continue to be encouraged in classrooms for anybody who is at risk for more severe disease. Masks will continue to be required on Duke buses and vans and in all clinical settings. And those individuals who are unvaccinated are still required to wear a mask in all indoor settings. Anyone who is experiencing symptoms should wear a mask not report to work or attend classes and get tested as soon as possible. And regarding testing, Duke will require all students to get a negative PCR test before arriving on campus, although testing results are not required to be submitted. Duke will continue to offer limited surveillance testing during the fall semester, which is optional for students, faculty, and staff. COVID continues to be challenging, but we are better prepared to address those challenges now more than ever with vaccines, boosters, therapeutics, and data-driven evidence for protection. So everyone continue to stay safe, have a restful weekend, and thank you for all that you do.